Okay, hello everyone and welcome. My name is Dan Matthews. I'm the Manager of Strategy and Communications for Cooperatives First. I'd like to thank you for joining us today to celebrate the launch of the Your Way Together campaign. Uh, first, I would like to begin by acknowledging that the Land Cooperatives First office is located on its Treaty 6 territory, the traditional territory of Cree peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We'd also like to thank everyone for coming from their traditional territories throughout to the Island. Uh, we hope the message we're sharing today is received in a good way. Uh, before we start, I have a few housekeeping items. Uh, first, we know you're all busy people, uh, so we'll try and keep this short, probably about 40 minutes or so. Uh, we have four short statements from supporters and the organization's leadership. Uh, following the statements, we'll host a short Q&A with our executive director, Rod, uh, Audra Kruger. We welcome questions at any time, of course, but I'd like to make a distinction between the chat and the Q&A options at the bottom of your screen. Uh, please use the chat function to talk amongst yourselves, request links, ask questions about the organization and whatnot. Uh, you'll see that my uh, colleague uh, Heather's already commented there and uh, Asa will paste the link to the yourwaytogether.ca site in, uh, in a shortly. Um, I encourage you to visit the site and explore the case studies, articles and workshop available there. Uh, there's also a newsletter sign up. Uh, for questions for Audra's Q&A, um, especially for those of you from the media, please use the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. Um, the questions placed in the Q&A will be answered first come, first served by Audra. If we have to run short of time, we'll note the questions and email response shortly, shortly after this presentation. Uh, finally, the presentation is being recorded and a link to the recording will be sent out uh, later today. With that out of the way, I should note that a campaign like this is not possible without the help and support of many people, organizations, and communities. Uh, we are fortunate to have a few contributors attending this launch, such as Paul Lidlin, uh, Muskeg Lake Cree Nation Urban Councillor and Cooperatives First Board Member. We'll be hearing from him later. Uh, Chris Seacott, Indigenous Liaison, Aeon, uh, Chair of the Kakiwistahau uh, Economic Management Corporation, and Sean Sunius, Director of Indigenous Relations, Farm Credit Canada. We'd also like to acknowledge the attendance of Senator Marty Klein's team. Um, and a special thank you to Nahi Yawaski uh, Indigenous Arts Cooperative and the Welcome Bay Fishermen's Co-op for their contribution of images and artwork within the guide. Uh, many have come before us, of course, and uh, we acknowledge their contributions. And I'd like to note a few of those inspirational works and contributors. Uh, the Saskatchewan Cooperative Association and April Roberts Quatois in the creation of Local People, Local Solutions, a guide to First Nations cooperative development in Saskatchewan. The Kani Kani Chick uh, document, Building Indigenous Cooperative Capacity, a guide to cooperative development. Uh, Jimmy Thunder and Mark uh, Intertas with their paper on indigenizing the cooperative model. The Gabriel Dumont Institute for the Pathways to Entrepreneurship work Workbook was a major inspiration for this guide. Uh, it's a pragmatic and inspired guide to entrepreneurship designed by and for Native or Métis people. Uh, the 34 autonomous cooperatives that own Arctic Cooperatives Limited continue to inspire us. And uh, we welcome our good friends from that organization here today. And of course, the Cooperative Retailing System and Federated Cooperatives Limited for their continued support and leadership. A special thanks to the recently retired uh, FCL executive, Vic Hewitt, for getting this all started and to Cam Skotnitsky for taking the time to make a statement today. And finally, a welcome, a warm welcome to you. We can't have this conversation without you. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, Heather, please roll the uh, Your Way Together promo video. Thank you. I believe there is big opportunity for our First Nations communities. The concept of cooperative models and the principles behind cooperatives, I believe, mirror what our values are within our communities. We could create multiple jobs in multiple communities if we are able to come together and have that conversation about the model itself. Far too often it's the uh, First Nations leaders in the community or the board of directors. Why can't we have community members being part of that control? 
Starting a business on First Nation is much more challenging than Off Nation. The Your Way Together guidebook is a collection of information on developing a co-op on a First Nation. It includes information on the co-op model, legislation that applies to businesses on a First Nation, and business development, including financing on a First Nation. There's a story behind the graphics. The design visually represents First Nations from the West Coast, the Pacific Northwest, all the way through to the Plains Cree in Saskatchewan. And I'm really proud that I'm able to pair these all together and create a mosaic that represents essentially a map of Western Canada. I hope the guidebook starts a conversation within communities to see whether the co-op model is a right fit for them. I'm an advocate for it and people need to hear it and actually see it in action. I'm here today on behalf of Cooperatives First, but more importantly as an Indigenous leader who sees value, opportunity and good reasons to explore the cooperative model and how it might benefit Indigenous communities. To explore something, we need to talk about it, to discuss, so the event today is about just starting a conversation. A conversation by and for Indigenous people about cultural, social and economic well-being. A conversation about growth, prosperity, nation building and development from an Indigenous perspective and viewed through a cooperative lens. Of course, cooperation is not an unusual concept for our communities, but the fact is not many Indigenous communities have chosen to use the cooperative model. And there are good reasons for this. Starting a business of any sort on a First Nation is challenging. Because of this, most businesses and economic development takes place elsewhere and down familiar path, such as investments in businesses and industries off reserve using models with proven legal pathways. And we've made these. Pathways work for us, but we can do more. One option for doing more is using the cooperative model to fill service gaps and start new businesses. The model has distinct advantages and can add value to the business as usual pathways. The cooperative model helps groups of people or organizations work together and gives anyone who wishes to be around the ownership table a voice. It offers decision-making power, provides ownership over the enterprise and affords experience with governance, individuals or other. Incorporated entities can use the model to work together to achieve a purpose that they have set for themselves and control. Even outside of the direct benefits of a business, these are invaluable assets for growing communities. Still, how Indigenous communities use the model to their full advantage needs to be thought through and understood from an Indigenous perspective. Take the Fisher Co-op, River Select for example a partnership between eight Indigenous fisheries. The co-op's purpose is sustainability, to sustain the community by providing a living and sustenance, to sustain a way of living and preserving tradition, and to sustain the ecosystem as caretakers of their lands and waters. There are other good examples of Indigenous co-ops, but we need more. Our communities and our people can benefit because the model is proven to do a great job of filling in small and remote communities, service and product gaps. It works where other models don't. So we need to have a discussion amongst ourselves about how this model can benefit our communities. But the only way to do this is by having a conversation. The Your Way Together campaign hopes to spark this discussion we hope you will join in. Federated Cooperatives Limited, or FCL, advances the long-term success and sustainability of co-op. We do this by providing wholesaling, manufacturing, logistics, operations, business enabling services, and marketing support for co-op. FCL does business differently. We were created by local co-ops. We are owned by local co-ops. We are fundamentally invested in the success of our co-ops as they serve nearly 2 million members through their retail locations in over 600 communities across Western Canada. 
Our local co-ops own and operate agro centers, grocery stores, gas bars, convenience stores, and home and building centers. Our vision is building sustainable communities together. For us, sustainability means adapting to meet the changing needs and expectations of our members so that we can continue to feed, fuel, grow, and build Western Canada to support our communities. This means we consider not just the financial impacts of our business, but also the environmental and social impacts. We work together to enhance the resilience of our communities now and for future generations. To achieve this goal, we seek opportunities for meaningful engagement, to expand relationships and build successful partnerships for the long term. A recent example is our launch of Western Nations brand and Indigenous Gaspar program, developed in partnership with Indigenous leaders and communities across Western Canada. The Indigenous Gaspar program's goal is to develop mutually beneficial relationships built on shared values, which include supporting strong, vibrant communities. Our ongoing investment into Cooperatives First is another example of our interest in collaboration and forming strategy based on guidance from engaged stakeholders. Before forming Cooperatives First, FCL commissioned a multi-million dollar research project from the Canadian Centre for the Study of Cooperatives, now part of the Johnson Choyama Graduate School of Public Policy. The project's goal was to see if the cooperative model could benefit Indigenous communities in Western Canada, and if so, how. After two years of surveys, community meetings, interviews and other forms of research, the answer came back a resounding yes. The cooperative model has great potential for these communities, but few people know how co-ops work. The recommendation was to form a non-profit organization dedicated to increase the awareness and understanding of the model and its benefits while providing financial and human support for groups looking to start a new co-op in rural and Indigenous communities. At the time, FCL chose to invest $5 million seed funding into the first five years of the initiative and today continues to provide $1 million annually. We see this as an investment into the vibrancy and opportunity flourishing in rural and Indigenous communities throughout Western Canada. The investment also contributes to our vision of building sustainable communities together. In closing, I would like to point out that leaders in the co-op system are stewards of a legacy. As stewards, we have a responsibility to both the past and the future. And part of maintaining this legacy means being an example of how the cooperative model works and can benefit the people and communities around them. Created and owned by local co-ops, FCL's purpose is to work alongside our members to collectively secure the long-term success and sustainability of co-ops and communities. We don't own local co-ops, quite the opposite. They own us and each of our member owners are independent, autonomous organizations. We combine the benefits of shared strategic direction and collective action with the value of local decision-making and community connection. And that's a very different way of doing business. Taking a similar position, the Your Way Together guidebook and campaign recognizes the potential value in Indigenous communities using the cooperative model. But it also acknowledges that this conversation, however it unfolds, should be for and by Indigenous people. Our investment into Cooperatives First means there are supports and resources available to help guide the conversation along the way. I wish you an abundance of success on your journey. Thank you. My name is Anita Large. I'm the program lead for the uh, University of Blue Quills. We have been working with Cooperative First um, with the LM430 uh, Business Co-op course. And we have uh, brought them in a few times to be able to talk about governance. The reason why we, we are teaching this course and why it was important to collaborate on it is because we believe that there are different people that have different strengths and expertise to bring together to provide the students a sense of what is out there in terms of just, in terms of business, um, in terms of economic development. Often you think about business in economic development, you think about the sole entrepreneur building a business. Um, you know, it's that more that more approach of a capitalist for profit um, approach that that's been taught uh, for a number of years. Um, the co-op model has been around for a long, long time. Um, and in recent years, it started to reappear into mainstream as as a as an alternative to business. Although the co-op model has been around for many years before that, decades. This OLM course has been taught for about almost 20 years. So we've been teaching this class for a while 
And the reason why we teach it is because the, L, the LM program, the LM means a leadership and management program, we teach from the perspective of, of coming from your true authentic self, but also how that relates to being uh, personal growth, which leads to professional growth, which leads to leadership and leads to better management skills. Management, self-management, therefore self-management of others. Um, and we, we're looking at this business model as a way of how can you lead as well your communities um, from a business perspective. But in this case, it's the co-op, the co-op model perspective. The co-op model is, that, is therefore working with others, working with community, working with um, those that, that have different strengths, pulling on the different strengths to provide a service and need that would no, not be there otherwise for the community. Um, this is important for the students to know that they have, they can empower themselves and they can empower their community and they can go in and help their communities to become uh, prosperous, but in more of a shared based approach, which is more to true to indigenous and Cree values. So this is why we teach the co-op model business um, courses, because we want to, it's, it's a good way of incorporating who we are as Cree indigenous people into a way of community economic developments of shared values, shared equality, equity, um, in, in raising the community up and providing the services that they need and also empowering them, the opportunity to power them to be, participate in some way as well. Depending on the type of co-op model um, that, that a student decides, they, they've actually learned there's different types of co-op models that can exist. There's a marketing co-op model, there's a manufacturing co-op model, there is a production co-op model, there is a model that is a mixed model, um, and we've been, they've been provided different examples of how this works. In each case, um, individuals can can buy into and participate in some form with the co-op model whether it be one being having one dollar and participating and benefiting from the dividends like the like a co-op store the other the other ways it, it happens as well there's also worker co-op models where a company where a company exists to be able to ensure that all the workers have our our part own own and participate and have that equality to share in the business and where where the results is not on the capital and profit going to somebody else that you never see um, and have no vested interest in your community or your in your in your development uh, a co-op off model offers that that personal development that that um, that commitment to employees that commitments to their communities and giving back as a a great shared um, model as well. I like to think of it the shared model because that's what really co-op models really are. And that's what we, one of a value of, of us as Cree and Indigenous people. And this is why we teach it here at Blue Quills Universities. Thank you very much for talking to me today and giving me this opportunity. Hi, hi. Thank you for joining us. This event is the result of a great deal of time, investment and passion for us and our funding partner. Cooperatives First promotes and supports development of businesses based on the cooperative model in rural and Indigenous communities across Western Canada. What does this mean? In short, it means we help people, rural and Indigenous people, start businesses. Of course, starting a business is hard work. It takes vision, creativity, dedication. Forming a cooperative brings benefits that are often greater than the sum of the parts. What goes into forming and running a cooperative generates more value than the services it provides or the revenue it generates. For example, River Select Fisheries Cooperative provides social, cultural, and environmental sustainability for BC fishing communities. Eight First Nation fisheries form the co-op after concerns about declining fish stocks in the rivers due to overharvesting by commercial fishers. Forming a cooperative helped small fisheries compete and gain efficiencies while supporting hundreds of fishers in their families' livelihoods. But more importantly, the co-op provides strict, selective fishing measures, retains a vital resource for their communities, maintains a way of life, and keeps their ecosystem healthy for future generations. That's a lot more than simply selling fish or providing a job. It's this more than the sum of its parts that drives us. Every day, we help rural and Indigenous people start cooperatives to improve their communities and to increase their economic, social, and cultural well-being. Like you, we want to see your community grow and thrive, to flourish. From this perspective, today is important. 
This campaign is a convergence of being receptive, learning from others, and spending time in many communities across Western Canada. For the past five years, we have had conversations with hundreds of rural and Indigenous leaders. We have heard their challenges, understood their hopes and visions for the future, and explored opportunities alongside them. Even the concept of Cooperatives First is the result of two years of research, dozens of community visits, and millions in investment. From there, our small team of passionate, experienced, and well-educated professionals have visited hundreds of communities, attended a wide variety of conferences, and mentored or worked alongside dozens of our partner organizations, all in the interest of better understanding the challenges and opportunities that rural and Indigenous communities face, and how the cooperative model could benefit these communities. And the challenges are not small, we know this well. But if history teaches us anything, it's that when times are tough, cooperatives flourish. And where cooperatives do well, communities do too. So that's why we're here. We're here to tell you that we're here to help you if you're interested in starting a co-op. You're not alone. We want to work alongside you to explore your ideas, flesh out the feasibility, and plan a way forward. Today, we're here to start that conversation and hopefully take the first few steps towards forming a business alongside you. Each of us at Cooperatives First are from rural and Indigenous communities. These communities mean the world to us. Your well-being, your future is important to us. If we didn't think the cooperative model could do some good, we wouldn't be here. Your way together is a confluence of a great deal of research, hard work, and passion for Indigenous people. But this is not about us, it's about you. And this conversation is yours to have. Thank you. All right, thank you uh, to uh, Paul, Pam, and Anita for, for those words and the ongoing support. Um, next on the agenda is just a short message from uh, Audra, and then we'll open up for uh, questions. So if you are looking to ask Audra a question, please enter them in the Q&A. Great, thank you, Dan. Uh, Dan gave me just enough time to uh, come out of the main space in the office and change my outfit and get a haircut. Um, so the beauty of video. Um, thank you very much for joining us here today. I'm really pleased to be here. Um, we, all, all, we know that you're very busy people and um, we appreciate your time today to again start this conversation. Um, and this is the time of the event um, that most of us like the most, which is, you know, we mill about, we get some coffee, we get some bannock. Um, we're not able to do that, but we hope you, um, everybody who registered um, would have received or they're going to receive um, a package where we can show you how much we appreciate your time. Um, we also happen to pop in um, one of our guidebooks, this um, beautiful piece put together by Tim and his team. Um, and also, you know, it makes a great really early Christmas gift or whatever. So feel free to pass that guidebook on to anyone who's working in um, economic development on nation or off. Um, we would be pleased to uh, send you more if you need. Um, again, I'm going to encourage everyone to check out the yourwaytogether.ca website. Um, there you will find um, many different kinds of resources for you. Um, particularly, you can download a copy of the guide. You can register for one of our workshops if you want to learn more about economic development on nation or with Indigenous communities. Um, and there's also a great collection of case studies. We're often asked about, um, show us where this happens, show us where it works. Um, Paul talked about, and I talked about the River Select Fishery Co-op, their, their case study there. Um, there's also a chance too to sign up for our newsletter. Um, in there, you'll have um, lots of tips and information um, and most importantly, uh, we want your feedback. As we mentioned, this is the beginning of a conversation. It represents you know, five years of um, talking to people, listening to people, us asking questions, people asking us, people asking us questions. Um, so it's really the start, the start of something. Um, so again, uh, pop your questions into the uh, Q&A. I think I've, I've stalled for enough time here. Um, I, see, I see one coming in here. Um, it's a question we get quite often. So we've been around for five years. So people ask us, well, how, how many Indigenous cooperatives have you worked with? Um, and so over the, the last few years, we've um, 
had the pleasure of working with 38 different uh, groups or communities that are interested in pursuing a co-op. And again, this um, represents a, a spectrum of uh, groups and communities, everything from the very beginning of the idea to actually incorporating the co-op. So we have a number of, of services that we um, can provide from hosting a community meeting, uh, feasibility studies, business plans, um, right up to incorporation. Um, and once the co-op is incorporated, the services that we offer are governance training in particular, um, and also assistance with regulations and working out the paperwork and such. Just looking at the Q&A here, I have to... Um, okay, so from Joanne. Um, how do we assess? Yes, okay, so um, this again has been something that we talk a lot about. Um, what are the um, predictors of success for a community or a group when they're you know, entering into the, into the fray to, to organize a, a business? And what it comes back to is it's the people. Um, we really need to get a sense that there's a group of committed people on the ground and they're the ones, they're the potential members or they're the ones who are gonna experience the benefit of, of the co-op when it becomes um, an entity and when it starts to function. So we, we spend a lot of time thinking about who's in and who's out and, and what kind of supports are on the ground. So again, each uh, situation is very unique. So the, the criteria that we establish, it's, it's flexible, but it always comes back, back to the people. I've got a, a comment from Dion. What was the biggest challenge community members on nation said when they faced all came with starting a co-op so i think that um if one was to look at it um there's many similarities for any uh, either starting a co-op or a business the the challenges are similar so um even even on or off nation um, starting a business is challenging and difficult and so again, getting back to the uniqueness of each community, there's some overarching similarities, but not a lot. It comes back down to a commitment of people on the ground um, and the ability to sustain that commitment because it is a long path. And we've got one here from Paul. Can an existing business that is a corporation convert to a cooperative? Absolutely. We've been working both on nation um, with some of these opportunities and also in rural areas off nation. Um, a lot of times uh, the conversation is around the conversion, uh, moving it from an entity that's more um, com uh, community-based asset, um, and therefore uh, the members might experience um, an individual benefit more directly, um, have a greater connection and ownership and control over the business. So we are in conversation with a few nations on that very um, opportunity. Um, okay, how are cooperatives? So cooperatives, their financing, um, you know, I'm going to get a bit noinky here, but there was a, um, a federal study done on financing of small and medium sized businesses that included cooperatives. And what that study found was that cooperatives are actually financed at or better than the same level of non cooperative businesses in that's a that's a national study. And so essentially the same kinds of financing options are available to co-ops as other uh, businesses. Um, there are additional supports for cooperatives, I would argue, particularly from credit unions across um, the ones that we work with in Western Canada, um, but also there are grants and other supports available for cooperatives. Um, and the, the benefits for Indigenous communities, so this is the second part of um, Robert's question, to choose cooperative, is again, it's about a group of people who have a shared interest, and they can clearly define um, what the problem is and how they want to solve it. So there's, um, I, I spoke in my somewhat stiff um, address there about uh, the, the benefits is greater than the sum of the parts. Um, and so what, what that um, group can do is really build capacity and um, an ownership and control and autonomy over the enterprise, but also that can, those are transferable skills and, and mindsets. So that's some of the benefit um, that, uh, that we see. I'm just gonna look at the, at the time here. Um, I'll take this last, this last one from um, Dion here. 
Um, and she asked, when you were listening to communities and developing the guidebook, what was the big, biggest challenge community members on nation? Oh, I think I, I saw this one already. So, um, okay, so I, I, think I've, uh, I think I've answered uh, the questions there. <laughs> So again, I want to um, thank everybody for tuning in today. And again, this is the beginning of the conversation. We're re really eager to talk to you. Um, you can contact me directly. Um, it's just my first name, Audra at cooperativesfirst.com. Um, and also please do visit the website, yourwaytogether.ca, where there's resources and uh, more information there. So I want to thank you all. And um, again, um, oh, I should mention too that it wouldn't be any kind of gathering if we didn't have a, um, a prize. Uh, we can't we can't pull your name out of a hat. Um, we could, but it really stressed us out on how to organize that. So instead, we're just going to randomize all your names, um, whoever registered, and uh, you'll get one of these beautiful mugs, Your Way Together mugs. So again, uh, thank you so much. And thank you to all of you who shared your wisdom with us over the years. Um, and I'm going to hand it back to, uh, to Heather. Thank you so much. Sorry about that, a little bit of confusion on our end, I think. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, very much appreciate you coming today. And uh, if anyone has questions, please reach out. Take care. <laughs>